Hey, this is Glendon Cameron with another edition of the American Hustler Podcast. In an effort to change your hustle, you must change yourself. Many people attempt to change the world to orient itself to that person's particular needs, wants, whatever. It's much easier for you to change yourself to suit the world. And before we get a little deep into that, you have to understand, before you create your own world, your own life of design, you must learn the rules and the regulations and the guidelines of the current world. Because if you go ahead and build your own world and you don't know what's going on with the larger, broader world, it's very easy for your world to crumble. To give you a little help with that, go ahead and grab a copy of my free audiobook, The Hustler's Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. Hit that green bar and you will be good to go. And it was really, really rough going in the beginning because I was saying, hey, this is what you need to do. And I was getting a lot of pushback. No, 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 I don't need to do that. No, 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 I don't need to do this. And well, if only other people would. And I just like, stop, just stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. You are not going to get the results that you want for your business, for your life. If you keep going at it that way. And I speak from experience because I used to be, you know, Pookie Nim and that that guy that was just like, well, I had an overly inflated sense of self-importance living in a boarding house. Well, I work hard. I'm a nice person. I do the right thing and this and that. And really, the world doesn't give a shit. <laughs> the world doesn't give a damn. We live in a world that is predicated on what can you do for me? Even more so in the internet space because there are so many people who are trying to carve out their niche that they are giving people incredible deals, incredible things just to be put on. So if you're coming into this situation of you or everyone has issues, okay? Let's just really drop that. Everyone has issues issues it's a matter of degree everyone has a level of dysfunction it's a matter of degree there's such thing as ocd and then there's a such thing as a person being a schizophrenic everyone has something no one's hands are clean no one is perfect but you would have some people who purport to be perfect i've said it many times i fuck up all of the time and what's really interesting about that because I'm not as risk adverse as I used to be, is the more that I fuck up, the more successful I become. Not saying it's going to be an easy ride, because there's some days I'm just like, damn, really? That had to happen. Okay, let's take it apart. How can we learn from this experience? How can we learn from this fuck up? And I'm going to tell you, you will learn much more and much faster from fucking up than playing it safe. I will give you the caveat that when you fuck up to a certain level, you may end relationships, you may end the business, you may end a lot of stuff that's happened to me. And looking back, looking at the results and, and when it's going on, you are in the world of hurt. You are in the world of <sighs> despondency. It's just very, very rough. But I look at some of my fuck ups two years ago which has led me to create certain products to change or how to communicate with people that is amazingly successful now. But that success that's happening now would have not occurred if I didn't fuck up then. So the line of progression from the fuck up to the success can be long. It can be short and it can be medium. There are no guarantees. And that's another thing that I was going into with this console. Everyone is looking for cookie cutter solutions. There's no such thing. Just like your face is different from the next guy, so are your needs, wants, and desires to a degree. 
we all have the basic needs of we want shelter, food, a great place for our family. There's just certain expectations that we all want. And then when you get inside the person, it's another ball game. When I do consults, I learn so much more about my customer than just from the, the casual email. Uh, check out my spreecast. Uh, there's one with Ronald Heron, the digital, uh, the international hustler. I'm, I've known him for a while. I didn't know he was that cool. So peeling back layers, going a little deeper, you come to new perspectives and new realizations. So if you are looking to change your hustle, if you're looking to actually increase your hustle and you are not currently getting the results that you want, the problem is you. It's not the world. It's not eBay. It's not Amazon. It's not Etsy. It's not YouTube. It's you. Now, I will be the first one to say that all those platforms do have issues. They do. Some more than others. But at the end of the day, if you have a plan of attack, you have desires, you have goals, and you're not afraid of change, you can be successful on all of them. Part of changing your hustle is taking a stand. Standing up, saying, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm not going to do. This is what I'm going to deal with. This is not what I'm going to deal with. In 2006, my partner and I made the decision that we were not going to officially deal with eBay. We outsourced that out to a kind of a, a fulfillment system using four distinct eBay sellers. And when I started this business, I had no intention of ever using eBay for this. And I have really stopped putting my products on Amazon for a time being. Still deciding that. And Amazon didn't do anything bad. It's just, I'll give you the business lesson. And this is about changing you to change your hustle. I looked at the numbers. Amazon's platform is Amazon's platform. They can do whatever the hell they want to. Because they built it. It's theirs. They can do what they want. The lesson learned there is... Build your own platform so you can do whatever the hell that you want. But many people miss that because it's, oh, it's too hard. It's too hard. It takes too much time. I just, uh, uh, I'm a scared little bitch. If you just say things like that, because understand, Amazon was Just blast it for years. It's like, here it is. They haven't made a profit. Years and years and years and years and years. Then one year, it just flipped. And then Amazon was the best thing since the Adam, since the discovery of vision. And it was like, but it took them a long time to get there. And there are many people like, hey, why do that hard work? Why take a chance? And you miss probably maybe a beautiful moment in your life. My deal with Amazon is... I did not like the uh, distribution of the pie. I didn't like it. I was just like, I'm doing the marketing. I'm finding these people. I'm putting up the videos. And I actually did a study for 90 days. There, I didn't have a lot of computer competitors, but as the storage wars thing went on and on and on, the number of competitors increased. So I would put a link under my YouTube video, direct someone to my books on Amazon, and then Amazon would do this very nifty thing, which is cool, and they're right. They would show other books in that category that were significantly cheaper. I was actually doing marketing for my competition. So I stopped because for 90 days I tracked it. I stopped doing that, and I started putting all my traffic toward my blog. My income quadrupled. And I saw that the sales of my competitors' books went down across the board because I checked every day. Because if you check Amazon's rankings, you can kind of decipher it to a degree. You know, you you can get an estimate. You may not be spot on because it changes, but you'll be in the you'll be in the parking lot. You know, you'll be in the parking lot. You may not necessarily be in the bathroom, but you'll be in the parking lot. And I noticed, and I was like, wow. So. For me and my business, my hustle, 
that was detrimental. And many people in my writing group was like, yeah, Emerson's trying to yeah, Emerson's trying to screw you. And it's just like they didn't understand. And I stopped having those conversations with those people because I remembered something. I was a business person first before I was a writer. They are writers and they're not even business people, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth. Then business people, they're not they're, I just want to write. I want to sit at my writing desk with Pookie the cat, and I just want to let the muse come lick my nipples, and I'll ruminate on the page, and the words will stand up on the page, and it would be awesome, and the people need to recognize that I sweated and I bled on the page, and then they should come buy my shit. <laughs> We've had some arguments in that group. And I've, I dialed it back. I dialed it back because, you know, in the you know context of this podcast, there are many people who refuse to change themselves so they can change their hustle. And a lot of writers are very guilty about that. They're just, it's great. I worked on it for 10 years. It's awesome. And this is something that they didn't do during those 10 years. They did not check the marketplace. I will tell you this right now, and it's the truth. And many writers hate it. The ones who will admit it. If you take a poorly written book, if you take a badly edited book and put it in a genre or marketplace, that is huge. And it's got just enough stuff for people to go, hmm, I kind of like that. It will do better than the best written, best edited, wonderfully designed book that talks about the subject most people do not give a shit about. Then we, oh God, that poorly written book, it sold 100,000 copies. I haven't sold 50 copies this year. There's just something really wrong with publishing now. (laughs) <laughs> no, there's something wrong with your ass. You ain't paying attention to conditions. And that's the problem. People do not pay attention to conditions. I realize that the only constant is change. I have changed up myself. I've changed up how I deal with people on YouTube. I've changed up how I deal with people on Facebook. Because if you don't change you, you're not going to change your hustle. It's just not going to happen. And what's going to happen is, mm, 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 mm. you're going to keep hitting that your head against the ceiling, the wall, or some other hard element and wonder why your brain is bleeding. You have to facilitate change. Uh, there's a guy on YouTube that made a really smart, to, smart, smart decision. And I'm seeing more and more people do this. Because there's a big, big conversation on, you know, because everyone knows how I feel about eBay, how I feel about PayPal. I don't use them. And that's my personal choice. There are other people out there who are getting fantastic results using eBay and no issues. I hope that continues for them. But the thing is, when you make these choices, when you actually sit down and say, hey, this is what I'm going to do for my business based on the data that I get because there was this article it was talking about people making decisions from the gut and uh, people making decisions from data I was a group I was in and someone's like how do you make decisions and I put data because I have learned there's many times and I'll tell you a story really quickly that my gut said one thing and the data said another and my gut was like, no. And the dad was like, yeah, baby. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I hired a guy I could not stand. Couldn't stand. Just, you know, it was just, it was a personal chemistry thing. It wasn't that he did anything or I did anything. It was just our personal chemistry was just like, oh, get the fuck away from me. And. But his the data was just like the dude's gonna be good. So I I hired him and I just talked to my partner and I said, Look, you're gonna handle him. For some reason, I don't know what it is. I mean, maybe you know we were warring brothers in another life. I don't know, but and he turned out to be one of the best employees we ever had. But if I hired him based on my if I made a decision based on my gut, 
we would have never had the experience of him doing things and implementing certain things in our business that made us money. So many people don't make decisions based on data. Because like I said, eBay and that stuff does not work for me and I don't really need it for my business. And another part of that is fear. You do Amazon, you do eBay. One of the big things that I push for, and we're going to talk about this a great deal this year in Hustle University, is creating your own products. I have a friend who's a hairdresser, a stylist, and she's created her own products. In, in her house, in the bathroom, she's created her own hair care products that people love. And it is just, this is someone three years ago that had a job and that was struggling, and she stepped out. And I'm not going to say stepping out on faith. She stepped out on action. Stepping out on faith is I'm just going to go out there and I'm stepping on air. Now, don't fucking step out on faith. Step out on action. Step out and do something. And she stepped out on action and she's making more money than she's ever made in her life. Ever. It scares her sometimes. She's like, I'm working hard, but I always have money. I can take trips. I can do stuff. Totally different life for her. So understand, I am the big proponent. And, you know, I started here on YouTube and that's part of me changing myself to change my hustle. Because when I first came on YouTube, it was all about storage auctions, storage auctions, all these crazy stories, crazy Craigslist stories, all this stuff. Then I realized something. Well, maybe the first six months that at some point this is going to end. I wasn't that person that was like, this is going to go on forever. No, this train is going to reach the end of the tracks one day. And what am I going to do? So at that point, I started slipping other things in, commentary, making mistakes, trying stuff, putting up videos, some that did well, some that went flat, just really pushing to do something different, to change my hustle because I knew I was going to have to. And there are many of you who get caught flat footed. Like I'm doing eBay. I rocked out for the holidays. What are you going to do after Christmas, bitch? There's a marketplace out there. People spend money 24, 7, 365. Do you have yourself positioned to get some of that money when the Christmas thing goes over? Because I did for the first time since I've been doing this and it kind of went the way I thought. I did like a Christmas special, you know, with some of my products and stuff. And I was like, eh, I'm not doing that anymore. I, I, I really like working on the daily, making money every day, making money every month, making money. You know, that's versus it's the special season. Uh, a lot of people lose money at Christmas from all of the um, discounting. And a lot of people get knocked out the frame with that. So understand The big fear of creating your own thing is it's going to take a lot of effort. But I'm telling you, if you can do it, because I'm not going to make any promises that you're going to go out there and create your own thing. And it's going to be wonderful and awesome. No, you may fall flat on your face. You may break your courage. You may really, really run a shank in your self-esteem. And if you can put Humpty Dumpty back together again. That's something I talk about on my blog, hustlersfood.com. You can become a stronger person. But that goes back to changing you to change your hustle. Your hustle is not going to change if you stay the same. And if your hustle's janky, that's because you're janky. Your hustle will only be crisp and clean if you are. So part of this change and and also you will piss people off because you can't please everybody you are going to piss people off expect it be prepared for people to go hey you came on youtube and you took your interesting videos about storage auctions and now you're trying to put your hands in people's pockets i'm unsubscribing now Once again, if you're paying attention, I've been trying to put my hands in people's pockets since day one. (laughs) This is nothing new. The only reason that the YouTube channel existed was a marketing arm for my book. That was the whole purpose. And I'm just very unvarnished with that. And many, many positive benefits happen with the YouTube deal. And you've changed what you've done. 
I have. This channel has changed about seven times in the last four and a half years. I've rebranded it. I tried something else. I tried something else. Because understand, as a person with the hustler mindset, I know there are times that I am going to fail. I know I'm going to fail. I know it's just like, this is going to try it. Because there's things that I was like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. And the crowd was like, wah, wah, wah. And then there's other stuff I put out, like that Pimp and Craigslist book. I didn't really think, nah, I'll just do it because someone asked for it. That's the only reason that book exists. Someone's like, hey, you know, I bought your storage auction book and you kind of touched on Craigslist. Could you do a book, full book on Craigslist? Eh, okay. <laughs> the sucker took off, right? <laughs> so, you you know, it's you got to be in action. Like I said, step out on action. Forget all the stepping out on faith. Step out on action. And it turned out extremely well. But change is going to happen understand you're going to fail don't get butt hurt because you failed i worked for a whole week on this project and no one liked it try working on some shit for a year and that shit explodes in your face when i was in the commercial office furniture space sometimes our projects were you know six months eight months nine months 12 months you work on a project for 12 months. You meet with a client six to 10 times, maybe more. You go to showrooms. You've invested money in a designer to do uh, layouts and all this other stuff. I know one project I worked on and I'm out of pocket because this was other job. I spent about 2,500 bucks on layouts and designs and stuff because we didn't have that in-house. Had the job. Was confirmed, was verbally told I had the business. In the 10th month, they were like, Glendon, we're going with someone else. If you could see the look on my face right now, you would be just like, damn, I was just so put out. I was just like, what? And and it was a very important lesson. No sign contract, no deal. (laughs) Say that with me. No sign contract, no deal. I don't care what they tell you. I don't care if they rub your back, have... A little midgets walk in bringing you pom-poms on a silver platter saying, yeah, you're I dude. Until you get a signed contract, until you get a check that has cleared your bank, not just getting the check, but this actually cleared your bank, the deal is not done. It's not done. So understand, and you know, as I do this thing with Hustle University and I talk to people and I realize that when I made that decision to adopt a hustler mindset and to do things that other people don't do, I set myself on a very good path that helps me deal with change because being a a commission only salesperson taught me how to manage money. Because if you getting paid on commission, you don't manage your money. Well, you will be laying on your friend's couch. You you just have to learn how it's a necessary skill set for you to occupy that type of world. So for me not getting paid, because, you know, I'll let you know, most of my main money comes in once a month. You know, I know many people are like, what? Get paid once a month? Oh, my God. Get paid once a month? I couldn't make it. (laughs) What? Whoa, 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 whoa. My wallet hurts just hearing that. And <laughs> I mean, it's it's part of being a hustler. You 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 have to change you. Now, how do you change you to change your hustler? Number one, you have to become really honest with yourself. If you are a yard bird, own your yard birdness. If you if your business isn't doing well, how many hours are you investing in your business? Because I'm gonna I'm here to tell you, if you're investing sixty, eighty. 100 hours in your business per month, you will get some results. They may not be the results that you want, but you will have some numbers and some data to work with. If you're working two hours a week on your business, five hours a week on your business, because uh, another thing that I want to discuss is I have enough exposure to certain people in the resale community because a lot of people hate this, but I didn't start the resale community, but I set that bitch on fire. So I got to know a lot of the suspects and the characters. And I've seen people for years pop up in groups like, you know, those little otters that pop those little, what are those things? Gophers that pop up out of their hole like, huh? Then they down. I, you know, it's like I'm in a group and 
gopher head pops up. Plant. Oh, there's that dude. There's that chick over and over again. And they're asking the same fucking questions for two and three years. Then I'll see somebody new who realizes they don't know shit. And they come in the group and they're like a sponge. Just suck up all information. And then they step out on action. And next thing you know, I've been doing Amazon FBA for six months. And we've got our first $10,000 month gross sales. Yet the gopher heads have been steadily heads up, head down, head up, head up. What I'm talking about is consistency in a plan. Many people who are in the resale business who are not doing well do not have a plan. And also, they don't have any money. If you do not have money to buy, how much money you're going to gross is going to be severely limited. Severely. You know, you got five bucks and you're trying to flip that into like a hundred... You were better off. I'm, I'm going to just give you an example. And I did this with one of my people because he saw some insipid shit called a six buck challenge on um, YouTube. And I said, look, let's let's just say you find an item f- for six bucks. Right. And you flip it and say every week you um, you find something. You, you spend six bucks and next week you make 12 and the next week you make 24. Then the next week you make uh, 50. Right. And he's like, yeah, yeah. I said, how many months would it take you to get to $1,000? And he was like, damn, you would be better off going out and getting a part-time job and taking all of that money and put it in your hustle pile, your hustle slush fund. You will get to $1,000 way quicker doing that than trying to flip it out. Because the thing is, with resale and the whole you know, trash to cash segment, the competition is growing. The redneck picker, maybe two, three years ago, put out a video that said the others are coming. He said they're coming and they're going to come hard. And the reason the others are coming, if you look at the unemployment numbers, they look all nice and clean and they're standing up straight. But if you t- cut the camera down, you see they the, those folks are on crutches and in the wheelchairs. They look like they're full body people, but they're handicapped. There are more people than ever who are underemployed, stop looking for a job, or it's a lot of bad stuff out there, so people are hurting for money, and that's why they're invading this space, and there's going to be even more in the next two years. There will be, you think there's a bunch of people in resale now? Two years, there will be even more. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, for Hustle University, that resale is part of it, but I'm looking at doing bigger things because it's hard for someone to compete with you when you're creating your own products or building your own tribe. It's it's like they could compete doing, you know, building their own thing. It's like, yeah, I build a tribe of X amount of people. You build a tribe. Yeah, they could compete like that. But if you've got your tribe, your products, your certain je ne sais quoi, it's very hard to compete with you. But if you're doing the same thing that Harry's doing and Harry's doing what Bill's doing and Bill's doing what Sarah's doing and Sarah's doing what Jill is doing, you just regular old stuff. You're just a regular old hustler. You're not an exceptional hustler and you'll never be an exceptional hustler because you're doing regular shit long term. So to get out of that, you have to change. Going back to the YouTube channel, it's changed seven times. Every time I made a change, I lost people. And there were people like, I want the storage auction stories. You ain't telling any storage auctions. I'm out of here. Hey, man, I want those crazy Craigslist stories, but I love them. I love them. Yes, I'm smoking a doobie. Oh, no, no Craigslist stories. <clears throat> I'm out of here. Oh, hey, I like the business stuff. Okay. Uh, I'm not really with all this uh, social commentary. Eh, I'm out of here. So, <laughs> you know. Every time I make a change, I know I'm going to lose people. And what I try to do is make changes that are going to get me way more people than the ones I lost. And I'm telling you this because as you do your business, similar things are going to happen to you. And just don't freak out and don't get worried. It's all just a learning experience. It's just you get new data to make better decisions in the future. Let's look at it like that. Because the new thing, Hustlers Food, you know, Hustle University. I wanted to create stuff that I could do long term and be very happy with what I'm doing. Because what did I just say? There's going to be way more people in the resale space in the next two years. 
The unemployment numbers are fiction. They are fiction. They're like Moby Dick. So what I know, based on my research, there's going to be a lot of people out there today, tomorrow, and in the foreseeable next 10 years who are going to need my services. So that's positioning your business for a marketplace versus buying stuff and hope it sells. Everything I do is data and marketplace driven now. Everything. If like if it doesn't fit the marketplace, if it doesn't, you know, I will do testing until the cows go mo. And you know, if the test says, mm, "Damn, that's booty," mm, that really stinks. It's not going to be in the grand plan. So a lot of the stuff that you see me doing, I'm testing, testing. You know, like I said, I'm not afraid to fail. You can't be afraid to fail. It is not going to kill you. Take small, calculated risk. Another thing that I have going on is uh, disruptive life coaching. There's only a handful of people in that group because I've never life coached before. And I want to say, you know, thanks to everybody that's there. That's, you know, and I tell them, it's like, you're all my guinea pigs. You're all my guinea pigs. And they're like, I am glad to be a guinea pig because once that's fleshed out, structures put in, that program's going to be 1500 2000 So it's like I'm helping them and they're helping me and we've got this wonderful thing going on because I know from experience that it wouldn't have been good to launch that program before I learned how to do it better. And I've got other stuff that's coming and there will be more sample groups. So in the best way before that question goes in the comments <laughs> is to get on the email list, you know, because when you get on the email list, you're going to get the hustler mindset Pimping Your Mind for Success. That's, I just decided that I'm giving that audiobook away for free perpetually. That's just how I'm going to do it. And you get on that list, you'll be first to know of what's going to happen. So going forward with your hustle, you got to change you. You really, really got to change you. Another way that you can change yourself is develop some consistency about your hustle. If you go on Craigslist, with no automation tools, if you just do everything um, organically, put your hands on it. If you get up every morning, it's been an hour every morning, Monday through Sunday, one hour a day, going on Craigslist, looking for good deals. One hour every day. 28 days a month, 30 days a month, 31. Every day, one hour. You will get results. There'll be days you won't find shit. There'll be days every day you're like, damn, look at this, look at this, look at this. There'll be weeks you won't find shit. Then there'll be weeks, oh, damn, damn, oh, man, I can't get to all this. There'll be months you'll be like, man, this was a month sucked ass. Then the next month, you make five times as much money. It's the consistency in the hustle business game. That's why it's called business. That's why it's called a hustle and not a job. A job is a container. It's a container with a set amount of hours and a set amount of money. I don't want that container because that container means limitations. A business, you have no limitations. You can fall and go (laughs) splat or you can soar and the next thing you know, you're kissing stars. But with the container, what you do, how much money you make is predetermined. And this is something that really pissed me off one night at the hospital because I saw that the work that I did had produced $24,000 from worth of revenue. And that point, I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck 18 bucks an hour. Give me 6%. <laughs> just, that's, just give me 6%. I'll be okay. <laughs> just give me 6% of the gross. And I started to reorient my mind at that point. I didn't understand what was happening. It was like the Borg had taken me over and I was becoming this different person. But I didn't know why. I look in the mirror and I was like, why is that little thing on my cheek? And it was just I was slowly waking up to the possibilities of life. There are people who are 50 years old, 60 years old, 70 years old that have never realized that they can make a choice to have the life that they want. Many people inherit the life they have from their parents. It was good enough for mom. It was good enough for dad. It's good enough for me. That's a misnomer. It's not about it's good enough. It's a matter of is that life appropriate for the person that you are, the person that you want to be? And when you start trying to do this stuff, like leave your tribe, there's repercussions. 
I grew up in a small town in Alabama. Work hard. Get a haircut. Get a job. The messages were over and over again. Work hard and don't rock the boat. Don't ask for too much. Be happy for scraps. Be exceptionally happy for scraps. Understand that, you know, the life that you have here is just a temporary phase, but your real glory is going to happen when you die. I reject that notion. And when I rejected that notion harshly, I start to see real glory in my life every day. I start seeing, you know, Mondays that were like Christmases. I start seeing waking up without an alarm clock because I don't have to be anywhere in a certain time. I saw that happen in my life when I rejected those notions. And if you're a Christian, I'm not being offensive. I'm just saying what works for me. And many people have a problem with that because I've dissected religion and I'm going to say it here and I'm going to say it now. That's some of the best enslavement I've ever seen in the span of mankind. It puts you in a prison that you think that you should be in and you don't try to get out because if you're getting out, then you're not being loyal and then you're being disrespectful and you're full of blasphemy. I believe you can have a wonderful relationship with God and not have all of that stuff that people who look like you, who go to the bathroom like you, who actually are just like you have told you that you need to do. But that's just my opinion. So with your hustle, you really, really have to work hard on changing yourself because, you you know, you can't be afraid to fail. You must develop some consistency in your hustle. It has to be long-term consistency. None of this, I did it for two weeks, it didn't work out. What's next? None of that. You're going to say, I'm going to do eBay? Set a goal. I'm going to do eBay for six months. Hell of hot water, I'm going to do eBay. I'm going to do Amazon at six months, a year. Set a goal like that. Commit to it. Go to work. Step out on action. And you will be surprised at the results. We live in a culture that many people, we're being dumbed down and dulled down for a reason. If you look at people who are living a life that you want to live, notice they're not doing the things that you are doing. They're doing something different. They're doing something radical. They're doing something maybe not so radical, but they're doing it different. And understand, you don't have to be better than the next guy. You just have to be different. And that's one of the things that escapes many people. Your products don't have to be earth shattering. They have to be different. I got a unit with some Jimmy shoes, Jimmy shoes, uh, Christian Louboutins and some other stuff. And I'm looking at the shoes and my partner and I, we're in the warehouse and I'm just looking at these shoes and they, these shoes were not. Not even closely more well constructed than the uh, Michael Coors, uh, the Baker shoe. It really wasn't. I'm just looking. I'm holding up to the light. It's like, what is the difference? If I shake it, will gold dust fall on my head? No. They were different. They had a different marketing angle. They had a different way of presenting themselves. And they created an environment of luxury and exclusivity. That was their difference. And... People bought those shoes that cost just as much to manufacture as the Baker shoes and others. Toyota came out with Lexus. And for many years, it was a Lexus ES300 and it was a Camry. It was the same car. It was just different. Same car, maybe 10% difference in badging and the looks, but mechanically built in the same plant. But there was a $15,000 price tag differential because it was different. So don't get all caught up that you've got to go out and reinvent the wheel and create. all. No, no, no. You just have to be different. That's it. So if you want to change your hustle, you must change you. Change what you do. Change how you think. And once again, hit the link below. First link. And get yourself a copy of my audiobook, The Hustler Mindset Project. Eh. Well, actually, that is the that's the genesis of the Hustler Mindset Project. But no, get yourself a copy of my free audiobook, The Hustler Mindset, Pimping Your Mind for Success. And you will get benefit. Trust me on that. 
All right, this is Glendon Cameron. Thanks for joining me on this podcast, and I will see you on the good side.